Amen. Good morning. Daughter, is that you up here? Wow. I just want to bring attention to you. That's all. There you go. We're going to get into the word here in a little bit. You can get a head start with Luke chapter number 17. We're going to go there, but we're going to spend a few moments recognizing a, a ministry partner in a very special way. Over the last uh, 11 years now, we've had the opportunity to do this little thing, and that's to have a charity golf tournament through our ministry, First Bible Baptist Church and ADP Sports. And the last two years, we said, okay, God, uh, who would you like us to raise money for? A worthy cause, someone, some organization, um, a bunch of people that really believe in the core values of the Word of God, the gospel, and uh, really could benefit from us going out, giving up our treasures, our monies, Everyone at the church, First Bible Baptist Church, says, I'll sign up to play, I'll sign up to volunteer, I'll sit at a hole for five, six hours and watch horrible golf, and, and still do it because of the glory of God. We just sung about uh, the glory of God, and we're going to even get into our message a little bit in reference to the glory, but we do all these things for the glory of God. The second year in a row, as I mentioned, this is 2024's brochure in 2023. They look very similar, except for we changed the dates to protect the innocent. But in the middle of this brochure gives you, when you pick this up, a reminder of what we did and who we did it for. ADP Sports Charity Golf Tournament, again, has been raising funds with your backing and your input and your devotion to the gospel for many, many different organizations. And so the last two years has been Plaza Heights Christian Academy raising money so that we could give them a, a check where it would help young students, maybe it's $500 a piece or 1000 whatever they want to do with that money to help students to uh, alleviate the burden of a private school education that on the other side, the blessing comes because it's such a good education. We have, a, of course, a beautiful tie-in in that uh, Mark Snow, who's been the uh, director of education. Now, this is your third year, isn't it? Wow. And uh, he, he, of course, is uh, with him and his wife and family. Um, just part of the beginnings, the middles, and the futures of our church forever. And so Mark, uh, Mark and I sat down and talked about it and said, hey, what if we could do this? Well, last year we were able to raise over $12,000. This year, $10,588.57. Mark Snow, Dr. Snow, please come up and speak to us while I give you this check for Plaza Heights Christian Academy. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you uh, so much. Um, yeah, as, uh, as uh, Pastor Mark mentioned, uh, my name is Mark Snow. I've actually been the head of school, not the director of education. Uh, we Christianize everything in the Christian school world. So the head of school, it's kind of like the, um, uh, the, the superintendent uh, now is the head of school. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, again, my third year here uh, at, the, at the school. And um, yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I've been around here at this church for a long, long time. My wife and I were charter members of the church here. And so uh, we've been here since day one and even before. So it's, uh, it's been interesting to see how God's um, moved us from, um, from the church here, which we weren't even sure we should come to Blue Springs years ago, coming to Blue Springs, uh, moving jobs from Smithville to Grain Valley, uh, not wanting to get a doctorate uh, because I just didn't want to take the time to get in the doctorate so I could be a superintendent. And ultimately, I think it led us to um, right now, we're exactly where God, uh, God had uh, our for our lives, uh, for me to, to be at, at the Christian school. So it's a privilege to be there. Um, we have a lot of tie-ins at, at the church here. We actually have uh, our board president back in the back, Terry Sanchez. Uh, I don't care what you say, Terry is a great president. So um, he does a great job and uh, it's a privilege to have him um, helping to, uh, to lead the school. Uh, Brian Calloway is also another board member. And we have um, several people that are staff members um, that attend church here, uh, several students um, that come to the school um, uh, here at the, at the church. And so I do have one special guest, uh, Rodney Burks. He's uh, our student life director. He's one of my administrators. He came today, him, him and his wife. So thank you for being here. Um, it's a privilege to be here today. And uh, yeah, I definitely want to thank the church for being so supportive. You guys are one of our key um, 
ministry partners here at, at, at the church. Uh, you do more than just a golf tournament for us. Um, you provide speakers for our, our, um, our, our youth um, uh, chapels yeah, quite a bit throughout the year. Uh, Josh has come and done our, uh, our youth retreat uh, last year, actually, and I'm sure he'll be involved in the future with that. And, and as Pastor Mark said, uh, this donation is going to go towards um, helping students who otherwise maybe couldn't come to uh, Plaza Heights to come to Plaza Heights. So I want to share a few facts about the, the school. And uh, yeah, they're behind me on the screen, I think. And I'll share a couple other things. But I want you to understand this is more than just going to a private school, OK? I don't want you to think, oh, well, they're going to a private school. Isn't that neat? Uh, we are a private school with a very specific purpose. And uh, again, a few facts about that. Um, we're more than just a Monday through Friday at school. We, we are, are there to reach out to the lost world and also to disciple uh, children to, uh, to follow Christ as they get older. And we kind of have a hierarchy, and I always tell uh, families this when they come to school. Number one thing, we want to see kids come to know Christ. Uh, number two, we want to see those kids grow in their relationship with Christ. And then, you know, we want to provide them a good education, too, uh, a great education. But that's number third on our, on our hierarchy. Um, why have a Christian school if, uh, if your number one goal is to not see kids follow Christ? So and if we don't keep that top priority as the top priority, no reason to even be there. Um, we have approximately 340 students in the building and 47 staff members. And those are both records for the school. So that's pretty cool. And that's up about 60 kids over the last three years since I started. Um, two years ago, my first year, um, I got these numbers from Mr. Burks here. We had around 30 of our students come to know Christ as their savior. And last year we had about 25 students. Um, so that, that, that's a pretty good percentage of kids. Um, not all those students necessarily received Christ at school, though some did, um, but they all had the seeds planted. They all had that uh, investment made in their lives so that whether it was at school or at their church or at home, uh, they had the opportunity to receive Christ and to know what that meant. So. And First Bible Baptist Church's efforts, uh, again, you help continue to make that possible by providing those speakers, by providing space for us here at the fields, uh, just by providing um, the support that, uh, that uh, only this church can provide. So I really appreciate that. Um, just so you know, uh, all of our students receive instruction daily in God's word at all grade levels. Uh, we have chapel speakers at the secondary level that meet every Wednesday. And my wife back in the corner there, uh, Pam, uh, she's actually our uh, children's chapel speaker. We started that last year because um, as great as um, great as people are speaking with you, sometimes they aren't all that great speaking to children. So we needed to do something specific for kids, and Pam has done a great job with that. And this year we also started chapel for our preschool. So um, three years old all the way up through 18-year-old are, are hearing Christ every day and getting specific instruction every Wednesday. And uh, just so you know, our student uh, population expands pretty wide in this area. We go all the way from Olathe, last I checked, all the way to Higginsville, all the way from Liberty, all the way down to Harrisonville. So that's a huge area. But kind of our main focus is, uh, is Eastern Jackson County. And um, so we take that seriously, just reaching out to the entire community, and we hope to be a light in that entire community as we continue. Uh, school takes kids on mission trips every year. One of uh, Rodney's jobs is to take them, and I, I need to question is, what do you, he's going to, went to Arlington, Texas last year in the middle of summer, 100 degrees, you know, but they do great work down there. They actually worked with a Muslim apartment complex down there and shared the gospel with them and um, did kind of a vacation Bible school with those kids. So um, the school also has adopted, uh, thanks to um, uh, connections with uh, Brian Calloway, adopted a school um, over in Africa in Chosey. And last year we raised money to put in a water tower and running water. And this year we hope to raise enough money to build them a school. So um, we just want our students to look past themselves, again, see themselves saved, see what their community, um, uh, opportunities they have in the community, and then see what the opportunities they have as Christians to reach the entire world. And so that's kind of one of those long-term, bigger goals we have for the school. And we want to have great staff members there also. We tell them we want them to be overtly Christian, and we use the verse every time, if any man loves God, the same is known of him. And that should be very evident in the lives of every one of our staff members. So um, it's a great school. It's a great opportunity to, um, to witness and to minister to families and to connect uh, those families with some local churches, local partner churches. We are an independent Christian school, but let me tell you, on the down low, 
we're a Baptist Christian school, okay? <laughs> so um, all of our leadership, all of our board, um, all of our speakers, all of our doctrine is very much based on the Word of God, and we intend to keep it that way and not water that down at all. So again, thank you for your support. Um, this is going to go a long ways to helping some students attend uh, the school. Um, together, we're changing the lives of kids and families in our community. Just ask you to pray for us often. If you'd like to uh, be involved in some other ways, whether it's um, uh, your time, or uh, I've even had some donations come from this church. Love to talk with you further, but again, we just mostly want your prayers because we want to always be uh, doing what God wants us to do and the way he wants us to do it, and again, make it a difference in Eastern Jackson County, just like this church does. Church does. So with that said, I'll turn it back over to our pastor. Thank you. <clears throat> you I'll leave my notes here. Something simple. Why don't you bow your heads? Let's just pray for Plaza Heights Christian Academy. Can we do that together? Just be in an attitude of prayer. Let me just pray with you, pray for you, and pray for Plaza Heights and all that Dr. Snow just mentioned. Our Father, you are so good to us. It starts out with how good you are and how loving you are that you sent your only begotten Son the Lord Jesus Christ. We learn all that we need to learn from the Word of God, and we really ultimately and primarily focusing on you, Jesus, and even in our study in the Gospel of Luke, we, we understand how you, Jesus, came to this earth and you were on mission. And so God, as you have sent your Son to do that which you would have us to do in the kingdom of God and do that thing which you have called us to do by the gospel to reach people. Thank you for Plaza Heights Christian Academy. Thank you for this local church that's able to do things to come alongside of a mission work, a ministry work that is centered on the name and the love and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for them in this coming year. Not to get out too far, but just pray for this year right now, 2024 to 2025. They're in the middle of it, been at school for about five or six weeks. I pray for the teachers, the administrators, the leaders, that God, you will gird them up, strengthen them, speak to them through your word. May they grasp who you are in a stronger and more resolved purpose. Get on and get in and get working on that staff. I pray thee, God, so that they can be supplements and partners and complementary pieces to these parents and their families. And I pray for the children. I pray for all the children, the 340 plus children that attend Plaza Heights Christian Academy from preschool all the way up through senior year in school. I pray that they will find Jesus, dear Holy Father. They will understand who you are, Jesus, in a very special way. That the Word of God, they will be really reproved and corrected and get some instruction and in righteousness to stay in the Word. I pray for this school, that you will take it where you want to take it, that you will have your will be done in the children's lives, the staff's lives, for the leadership. I pray lastly for Dr. Snow, for Mark, my dear friend, and of course, a member of First Bible for 27 plus years, wife, his family. I pray that you will just protect and cover and watch over that man as he leads a work in this community that of course has its ups and its downs his trials and his tests. I pray that you will make him a more godly man every day, a better leader every day, that he'll be a Moses type, he'll be a David type, he will be a godly type. Most of all, he'll be more like Jesus Christ as he leads this school, this ministry work. Thank you for the privilege, God, you bestowed on us, the favor to have this golf tournament and be able to give someone, a bunch of kids, a gift to aid in their education at a Christian school. God, multiply your monies. And thank you for everyone at First Bible for all that they have done and all the contribution they've made to make our golf tournament a success. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. amen. Okay, service is over, you're all set. No, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Luke chapter number 17, let's get into the word of God. Again, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Snow. Thank you, Plaza Heights, 
Christian Academy peoples for hanging out with us today. And um, it really is neat to see how God has put some of those things together all for his glory and his honor. Luke 17, we got into the first few verses last week, again, during our Honduras mission trip celebration. That was a pretty neat time last Sunday, and here we are again this Sunday having a a neat time of, again, just testifying of the Lord, testifying, and as I often say, telling the story of his glory. And here we have in Luke chapter number 17, beyond those first 10 verses that looked at faithfulness and forgiveness, you know, Jesus in, in teaching such strong words talked about, hey, if you offend somebody, you could face God's judgment. Deal with it. If someone offends you, then deal with it properly by having biblical forgiveness. Increase our faith, he says in verse number five. And so that background, it's interesting, but to me it's just clear. The apostle said, Lord, increase our faith (laughs) when it comes to forgiveness. I don't know. When it comes to handling offenses, when it comes to relationships, maybe simply put, it's right sitting right there in the Word of God, and it's not a coincidence. Increase our faith. We need faith. And that's what the apostles were directed and spoken to by Jesus' many little parable where he talked about being a faithful steward, having the faithfulness to steward things really, really well, properly, and be called in verse number 10, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which our duty to do. Very simply, I'm not trying to get a remuneration. I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need to be recognized, hey, you did the best job. No, no, I'm an unprofitable servant. I'm doing that which God has told me to do, led me to do. I'm following the example of Jesus. So that's the setup. Those are the first 10 verses. That was last week's message, which was very short, to even a shorter version. Here we are in chapter 17, verses 11 down through 19. Here we have the account of the old 10 lepers being healed. Now Jesus is healed one leper at a time once, We have Simon the leper. We have some accountings of leprosy being healed and dealt with. But here is really a Lukean or Lukean look at something. Once again, it's it's, it's just to Luke's gospel of these 10 lepers. And this is not a parable. This is an account. This is a narrative of something that's happened, and Jesus Christ is telling it. If you look at verse number one of the chapter, you see that. There is an audience, and I mention this often, the disciples. So the disciples were there for the first few verses. They haven't disappeared. The disciples are around, just like, hey, Matthew chapter number 5, 6, and 7, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus had this multitude around him, but he had the disciples really close. The disciples are close to him again. The disciples are around to learn something. There's a reason for this. This is near the end of his earthly ministry, as we've been mentioning, and he's getting there. And it says even in the text that he's passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. It is said that this setting, um, time-wise and geographically, would be set maybe in John, between John 10 and John 11. So the setting of this is getting to Jerusalem, going to be in Jerusalem, going to get to Jerusalem. Why? Because he's going to the cross. His most important and primary purpose. So here we are at forgiveness and faithfulness, and now we're going to look at thankfulness. Oftentimes with the ten lepers and this story, and I've heard some neat messages over the years, the focus may be on the one, the focus may be on the nine. I would say that Jesus is pointing out those nine about as strong and as stalwartly and as harshly just by the couple of questions he asks in verse number 17. And to me... Jesus doesn't miss a trick. Jesus is like a bullpen guy, a relief pitcher sitting in the bullpen. Relievers don't miss a trick. Now when they get in the game, they mess things up, as you can see by the Royals. But they're watching everything. So Jesus is watching. Jesus knows what's going on. And he really takes to task the nine that did not show thankfulness and gratefulness or 
Shout Glory. That's why I entitled our message, Shout Glory. You'll find it in verse 15 a little bit because there's a loud voice that glorified God. Shout Glory. Did you read the passage ahead of time before you picked out your song? No, yeah, you did. Show us your glory. This kind of sets up a little bit even for the next couple weeks as we get into our Acts 1-8 conference entitled Extol the Lord. And it will be a, a time again where we champion the Acts 1-8 mission of our church and champion Jesus Christ, the one we lay everything down for in the mission of the church. So looking forward to that in two weeks as Dwayne had announced it. I want you to just grasp these verses as we read them. We always just went after a small chunk of verses again. Let's really focus in on this. We've got a few minutes. Let's see what God has for us in verses 11 through 19. We start by reading the passage. Verse number 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met with him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They have to stand afar off. They have to. Verse number 13 says they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They don't even have to lift up their voices to get attention. Because I promise you one thing, if 10 lepers are headed into this crowd of disciples and other people that are wanting to listen to Jesus, I promise you they are alerted. Get them out of here. Get them away from me. Because they are a culture unto themselves. They have a community unto themselves. And of course, it doesn't matter, Samaritan and Jew, when it comes to leprosy. They share a trait that has bound them forever. Unless, of course... There's this one named Master Jesus who shows mercy on them, and he heals them. We continue in verse number 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. That's weird, isn't it? But we'll look at the text because it is Jesus on purpose doing what he knows to do. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Pretty cool. Hey, go show yourself to the priests. You look the same. But you changed after a few minutes. That's Jesus' immediate healing. Verse number 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. That'd be a good break time series. What do you think, Thomas? You just need two verses right there. You want to do a a little of devotion with your family? That's money right there. This man, wow. And those two verses showed us exactly what we're supposed to do to show gratitude. Verse 17. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? <laughs> when Jesus asks questions, they're so piercing. There are not found that returned to give glory to God. Save this stranger. He calls him stranger because he's a Samaritan, not friend or brother in the culture of Jew. He's a stranger to the cultural setting of everyone there. Verse number 19 says, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He got an extra bonus, didn't he? It's happened a few times in the account of Jesus. He was healed physically, and what else did he get? His sins were forgiven. He was healed spiritually. Message over. Close your Bible. Hallelujah. That's powerful. I mentioned in just a few words a minute ago, something about forgiveness and faithfulness. And when we experience a person who has extended forgiveness, it really matters. Think about it. Stop. I'm not talking about you forgiving somebody. I'm talking about a person who's extended forgiveness to you. Isn't it just, isn't it just good? 
when someone forgives you. They extend forgiveness. The second one I put up there, when we witness a person who has exhibited faithfulness, it really matters. I didn't say that you were you doing what you do to... When you and I witness a person who has exhibited faithfulness, that has clean the church without asking for any remuneration ever. That's been cleaning and, and changing diapers in the nursery. That's been teaching two-year-olds. I think of Lisa and Steve Lynch. Maybe some of you don't remember them. They taught two-year-olds two for 20-ish years in this ministry. And just life and family changed them, so they had to move away from the area. Faithfulness, when you witness it, it, it When we hear a person who has spoken words of thankfulness, it really matters. I didn't say you being thankful. When you hear someone speak words of thankfulness, it really matters to you. Doesn't it hit you? Like, I just heard that young boy come up to his coach and say, thank you, coach. I saw the teacher in Sunday school saying, thank you for teaching me about Jesus this week. When you watch that and you see that and you hear the words, thank you, Thank you. Jesus Christ is not just teaching the basics. He's kicking it up. Disciples, you need to get it together. This is why a lot of people will love a lot of other things and not be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ because they can't put down themselves. And see, Luke is teaching something here about these 10 lepers that talks and speaks right to can you put yourself down and just go back and say thank you? The narrative that Luke tells when Jesus healed the ten lepers revealed a powerful lesson about the stark contrast. It is so clear between the gratitude of one who is healed and the ingratitude of others who just want the miracle. How many times has this happened in Jesus' life? Just give me the miracle. Just heal me, take care of me. But then there's, of course, the woman with the issue of blood that was blown away, and then he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Jairus' family and the daughter, oh my, just believe, and your daughter will be whole. The palsied man, your faith has made you whole. Some people just want the miracle. This is God's way in Luke's gospel to reiterate the importance of an attitude of gratitude toward God. Yes, to other people, but toward God. He's reiterating the importance of an attitude of gratitude toward God. So we ask ourselves, why would a person who has been touched by the healing power of Jesus Christ forsake the importance of speaking words of thankfulness? Why would... A born-again believer. Go to Romans chapter number 6 with me real quick. Romans 6. Why would someone like you and me, born again, today if you're saved, you're born again, you know Jesus Christ is Savior, call on the name of the Lord to save you, put your trust and faith in his grace through faith, and not of yourselves as the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You say, hey, I know I'm born again. I know I'm saved. Then you go to Romans chapter number 6, hang everything on your head in those 23 verses and go home. Deal? Right? Just hang it. Just take all those 23, put them in your pocket, and go home. Everything's good. Yeah. Verse number 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. I'm lost, I obey sin. I'm saved, I obey the righteousness of God. Verse 17. But God be thanked that ye... We're the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of, a right, of righteousness. That should be, yay, shout glory, bam. That's it. That's what the leper did. He got a great deal. He got a bigger deal than he thought. And Jesus made it a big deal because he said, your faith. We know the old phrase about Romans, many of you, no reckon, yield. 
three great words. Why would a born-again believer who has been healed from sin not express, express gratitude? But God be thanked. So here's how we start our prayer. Dear God, thank you for my salvation. Thank you for Jesus. You're so good to me. You give me a twinkle toes. I feel so good about myself. <laughs> Please help me in my day. Amen. Our gratitude is pretty weak sometimes. Just got to say. And it's shown in the way that we deal with our days. Because an attitude of gratitude is the attitude of gratitude toward God for saving our souls. Where is there? I've said this before. I've had a few tomatoes thrown at me, but that's okay. How is there a bad day? In general, because there are bad days. There's trials and testings and heartaches and pains. I, I know, I know, I got gotcha. you. But my goodness, but God be thanked. I was a servant of sin. You saved my soul. Now I'm a servant of righteousness who still makes a mess out of things sometimes. And you still got me. You still got me. You're never going to leave me. You're not going to forsake me. You want to hang another? Put another one in your pocket, though? Grab yourself some Romans 8. I love me some Romans 8. Oh, my, neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things. Ah, nothing will separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bam! I like that stuff. Because that's what the Word of God says. Be, but God be thanked. So that's all we're going to do today. That's all we're going to do. We're going to look at what it's like when you and I shout glory sometimes. We're going to use this text, and we're just going to see. I've got just these few verses. No three points in a poem. I've got a few others, but just each verse, I think, has some. Each couple of verses that's really kind of cool. And I approached it this way. Again, how many of you, when you pray after you do some things and you have some special needs, right? How many of you say, God, I need your help in this. God, would you please help me? You don't have to raise just, God, would you help me in this mess that I'm in? Because it's from the scriptures. David did it. Delight, rest in, wait, help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. They came and asked for help, the ten lepers. They came for help. Help! But here's the deal. When you ask God for help, and you mean it, and he delivers, I wonder if we're really that thanked. I wonder if we're the nine. Please, God, help me with the agony of my soul over the loss of my daughter. Please, God. And you get up from that and you become angry. You haven't let God help you one single bit. Because God wants to help you. He wants to help me and He wants me to say, But God be thanked. I was a servant of wickedness. And now I'm a servant of the one who saved me. Master Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. King Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. I do take you off of the lordship of my life sometimes, but truly, I am grateful to you. I have gratitude to you. Thank you for the Honduras trip, people, the testimony last week. It blew my socks away. Thank you, God. Thank you for allowing us to give a check of 10508 Don't you like how I left it as an uneven number? It was kind of fun. Yeah. Sense of humor, I don't know. I don't have much. But thank you, God, for letting us have gratitude an attitude of gratitude. There's three or four pieces in a marriage and a home that can be truly soothing and helpful, and one of them is to be a little more thankful and not so critical of your children, of the decorations, of the television show, of the football game. Oh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting distracted. Being too critical of things. Two good things. Okay, we've set this all up for just a few little minutes. I got a few cross references. I'll cover some of them. A number of them are in Psalms. But here we go. When we ask for help, outcast lepers seeked help from the Lord, which in turn revealed their desperate need 
for mercy. Go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Let me speak through this passage. So many of us know this Psalm 51, a lot of verses in it because it strikes us with, well, of course, David's writing about his own plight of sin and how much he needs God's mercy. He is a leper, (laughs) like you and me. Leper is a picture, a type of sin in the Bible, yes? Have mercy upon me, he says in verse 1, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of the tender mercies, blot out my transgression. If you see in Luke chapter number 17, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Mercy is when God does not deliver to you the judgment and punishment that you deserve. It's not grace, it's mercy. And he's begging for mercy, those lepers, because they raised their voice and they wanted Jesus to hear them and see them. Here's David calling out to the Lord, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, in verse 2, cleanse me from my sins, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee alone, excuse me, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judges we could go through that whole one but it's centered up on the idea that they had a desperate need for mercy psalm 103 some of you really like this one i bet some of you read the psalms a lot we're just going to take a stop in it's like going to the rest area and getting a cool drink is there any good drinks at a rest area no i'm just joking Here we go. Psalm 103. There's a spiritual rest area. Here we go. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Verse number one. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Wow. Lepers? Are we lepers that have been healed and our diseases have been healed? And of our iniquities? Woo. He's forgiven. He's healed who redeemeth my life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Verse 4, who, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Whew! That's good. Thank you, God. Verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Many of you know this one. This is, and if you don't, ha, if you read five psalms a day, then you'd be in this little package right here. Psalm 116, this would be in the package of five psalms right now on this date. Psalm 116, oh, this is, I mean, as I was reading through some of these, they were just such a joy, and reading different ones, I read a bunch of them, and this is where God just landed me. Verse 1, Psalm 116, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Did not the Lord hear the lepers? Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, the pains of hell gat hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Oh, he's so merciful. He was merciful on the lepers because the lepers came to him and said, we're desperate, we need your mercy, please. Old Naaman wrestled with it. Finally, he bowed into just jump in that dirty old river and wash yourself down. Do what the prophet told you to do. Thank you, God. When we ask for help, the example is that these outcast lepers, they seeked help from the Lord which in turn revealed their desperate need for mercy. Second one, when we asked for help. The Lord responded to the leper's plea, which in turn revealed his expectation. Now see, here's the thing. When you ask the Lord for help, and he responds, here you go. It revealed his, the Lord's expectation, of faith from them. In Luke 17, 14, let's stop for just one minute here. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. Go to Leviticus 13 while I am speaking. Get a head start on it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus, and then just punch it in your digital Bible. There you go. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. 
their faith, they moved. Why did he send them to the priests? Knowing that here in a couple of verses, we're going to see the divinity of the royal high priest when he bows down to him. Leviticus chapter number 13. Real quick, just a quick review. If we start studying Leviticus, we'll be here till 2027. But there's enough in there to carry it, I think. It's got some good material in there. You may have to lean on the Holy Ghost a little bit. What do you think there, Maddox? Be good. It says right at the beginning here, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Verse number one saying, when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising scab or bright spot, Hey, if there's a possibility of, uh, of leprosy, what happens? They have to bring him to the priest, right? I'm just setting that up. This whole text is about this. Verse number 21, it's up on the screen. But if the, not the text itself, but the address. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be, be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days, and if spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But, verse 23, if the bright spot stay in his place, spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Who does the work of saying you're clean? Who's the one? The priest. You must know that and have some background. If you looked at chapter 14, there's so much there. I don't want to go too far in there, but 14 does a little bit further. It talks about the cleansing. It talks about the priestly duties and the, right, or the day of cleansing and how it's going to go. Chapter 14, verse number 2. This shall be the day, I mean, excuse me, the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought into the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp. The priest shall look and behold at the... It goes through the whole cleansing, and an unbelievable process of how leprosy has to be cleansed. And the priest is going to do it at the synagogue. Look at Jesus. <laughs> hey, Go show, in fact, we won't misquote the Bible, go show yourselves unto the priests in verse 14, chapter 17, and it came to pass that as they went, whoa, whoa, what, what? You look clean, you're clean too. What, what? So my grandson says, what? He's clean. All of them are clean. They have to show the priest. The priest is going to declare it. They had a need for mercy. But Jesus on the other side, when he, resp he responded to them, his expectation was you better have that faith. I expect faith from you. You better do it. You better move on it. Or nothing's going to happen. Faith. Faith. I heard that's part of even this chapter, increase our faith. Number three, when we ask for help, back to Luke chapter number 17, verses 15 and 16. One leper had honor for the one who healed him, which in turn revealed that Jesus Christ is divine. One. Let's sit on him for a couple minutes. One leper had honor. How do you know he had honor? Verse 15 tells me. Let's just, again, as I lightheartedly spoke, but I'm very serious. One of them. How would you like to be the one of them? The leper, the one of them. <laughs> when he saw that he had been healed, He turned his direction. He turned back to Jesus. That's a whole other message in itself. With a loud voice, he glorified God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Psalm 107, many of you know that one. Go to Psalm 107 for just a moment. You know that that verse up there that's repeated, I have the address of 8, 15, 21, and 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works 
to the children of men. The psalmist is giving an accounting of how the Lord has been there supplying and caring for his people. Deliver them out of distress. Oh, that they would praise the Lord for his goodness. Verse number 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Here's the redundancy of Scripture, but it's not redundant like to the negative. It is a reiteration of a point. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for the wonderful works to the children of men. This should be the way we give gratitude all the time. Verse number 21, all the time. Thank you, God. Oh, that men, oh, that men, oh, that men. Verse number 31, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Oh, what would that be like? My attitude would be filled with gratitude. Had a bad day, some bad things happened, but boy, God, I just reverted back to extolling your name, (laughs) exalting your name, blessing your name, giving glory to your name, praising you for the wonderful works that you have done. Psalm 116, one more time. The second half of it's pretty cool. Verse number 12 says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? May I pause for a moment and say this. What do you and I really think we can render to him? To me, that's a rhetorical question. In the verses, you can see that there's one thing I think, maybe there's a couple, I don't know, Correct me, send me an email, I don't know. There's not a whole lot that you and I can do for the Lord. But this one thing you can do, you can tell him thank you. Thank you. Give him gratitude. Live a life where you're grateful to him. Live as though you are hanging on what he will do next. And if he didn't do anything else, you would still be grateful for everything that he has done up to this point in your life. And that's all I need to do. Oh, God, if I could just do this, this, and this. If I get a couple more dollars, I'll give it to a mission. If I could just get some more money. If I could just make some more money, I'll give it to you. If I could go on one more mission trip. Are you serious, Mark? What am I going to render to the Lord that he doesn't already have? He gave it to me that I could give it back to him. So it's pretty cool in Psalm 116 when he says, I will take the cup of salvation. Some of you read ahead. It's okay. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Bam. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, I'll talk about him. I'll give him glory. I'll give him honor. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Oh, Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. Hallelujah. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call upon the name of— Listen, you want something to do for the Lord? show him some thanks. Give him the gratitude he deserves. Speak it right here, Dennis. Oh, the Lord responded to the lesson spree, which in turn revealed the Lord had an expectation for them. And the Lord God Almighty has an expectation for all his believers that we would render unto him and that cup of salvation, praise and honor and thanksgiving. Amen. Two more. Here we go. Fourthly, when we ask for help, Jesus looked for the others he healed. Back to Luke 17, which in turn revealed the importance to give glory to God. Where do you see that? Again, it's right there. It's right there. It says in verse number 17, two incredible questions. I stopped by them for a minute when I was reading it, but just consider this. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are are the nine? Jesus looked. How did he know that they weren't there unless he looked? Do you think God is sleeping, napping on you and me? Is he napping and sleeping on the lepers? When they come and he recognized and then he bestowed upon them what they asked. They asked for mercy, he gave it to them. 
Now what do I do about that? I'm one of the ten, I mean, one of the nine, and I'm going, you know how many things I am, just don't have an attitude of gratitude about? When Jesus asked those two questions, they, they hung on me for a couple. Oh, gosh, I, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Jesus, the one who hung on the cross for you and me, is asking that question of the disciples and of the Samaritan who's right there at his feet. They're right there, all together. There are not found that return. There are not found that return to give God, to give glory to God. Save this stranger? Psalm 29, real quick. Oh my, this one. Reading through a few of these, I, when I parked on this one, I remember this one at different times. I mean, it's one of those where you, you go, wow, that's, a, that's been a good one all these years since you put it in there, God. Old David, a psalm of David. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. And when you and I grasp his thunder, his power, his glory, man, how did he even pen those words without breaking apart? The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. It's important for me to give glory to God. You say, well, that's why we do everything. That's our purpose. And we just recite things flippantly. I bet those nine lepers said, yeah, we'll give God glory. And where were they? Because Jesus asked, where are you? Where'd you go? Do you and I really give glory to God? And then there's Psalm 30. <laughs> I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought me up, brought up my soul from the grave. Yes, thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness, for his anger endureth but a moment. In the in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning when you think it's so really bad. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. In the leper's prosperity, they moved out the door. They didn't turn back like the one. Oh, whew, there's so much there. Lastly, when we ask for help, the faith of the healed Samaritan leper glorified the Lord, which in turn revealed, which in turn revealed that he was made whole. He was made whole. It says in verse 19, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. As the old phrase goes, it doesn't get any better than that. Your leprosy is gone, and now your soul is healed. Your sins are all forgiven. Your faith has made you whole. What a Savior we have. What a salvation. 
We taught on Luke 8 before. Let me go to Mark 5, and I'll be finished right there. Oh, my. Think of the setting now. The synoptic gospels have it. Let me pick it up in 25. You got the setting. A certain woman which had an issue of blood. 12 years, right? Now, Jesus is moving through a crowd, right? Don't forget, in verse number 22, there's a guy named Jairus, and he has a daughter, right? I mentioned it in passing. But think of all that went on here. In verse number 30, Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had left him, right? His disciples said, how, do you, how can you even figure that out? Who touched me? Verse 32, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him. The divinity of Jesus Christ, the holiness of holy God, no one bows to anyone but God. And she fell down just like the leper fell down and worshiped him and told him all the truth. And what did, she, what did he say? Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and behold thy plague. The plague of sin and the plague of the issue of blood. Not every account of Jesus' healing miracles went that way. In fact, very few did. But when he says that, he means something there. Your spiritual state has been made new because you put your faith and your trust in me. That's powerful. I got to give some gratitude. I did not expect what I got when I asked God to save my soul. I hated myself. I didn't want my life anymore. And golly, what he did for me and you. Where's my gratitude? I need to have an attitude of gratitude toward God. And when I have it toward God, it's for everyone else and everything else. It changes everything. What a bonus, your faith. If you're lost and you don't have Jesus as Savior and never put your faith and trust in him, I, I suggest, suggest strongly, don't just go ask him for a new arm, a new leg, and fix your injuries. Ask him to save your soul. He will forgive you. The Bible teaches us that you'll be free from sin. I read it in Romans 6 earlier. If you have any questions, come ask me after service. It says up on the screen, before I ask a question, that verse of 19, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He says in Mark 6 to the daughter, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Woo! This world has got a lot of crazy messaging for us. Many contrary messages in this world move us away from the one who deserves the gratitude and glory for Jesus Christ making us whole. The world wants us to put all the trust in something else and someone else. It's Jesus. When is the last time you checked your attitude of gratitude unto the Lord? Please stand for a word of prayer and a time of prayer. Debbie, could you please just start the background music? Why don't you bow your heads as I pray with you and pray for you? And then you can take this next two or three minutes in a time of prayer. Father in heaven, what a time that we've had in your word. Because it's your word, and it's who you are, holy God. You've saved souls, you've healed people. And by faith, this leper was made whole. His sins were completely forgiven after his leprosy was washed away. I pray, God, for those that are considering and wondering that maybe that will be what they would consider. That as a leper, I need to come to Jesus to be healed. And then I pray for the believers that have given their life already to you, holy God. They've trusted in Jesus. I pray that you will check our attitude of gratitude for us. And as we check it with you, God, we will have a sweet time of prayer, making some things right. God, bless in this time of invitation, I pray in Jesus' name, amen.